Shalom, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Makak Rodash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge Allah Akiam for pushing this truth with sincerity. Alright. Um, so, the spirit today got me in uh, Acts 13. I'm going to start at 44. It says, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yahweh. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, and they were filled with envy, and spake against, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of Yahweh should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. All right, and so you, what you got to remember is the Gentiles that are speaking of, these are still uh, men from the tribe of Judah, men, men from the tribe of, uh, you know, all the tribes, you see. Um, the thing is, is these Gentiles are the Israelite Gentiles. Our people became strangers. In the book of Maccabees, you read about that. Let's, let's get that real quick. Let's see. Actually, 11. It's after the Greeks was taken over. It says, In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Okay, so when you go to look at this, when you go back to Acts, and it's, uh, what is it, 1346? I'll read it again. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed. So, so when those evil men out of Israel we just read about left and joined the heathen, they become Gentiles, which that word Gentile means alien, stranger, foreigner. Right, you're a foreigner to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai when you join with the heathen. All right. Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of Yahweh should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. All right. So there was, there were, there were uh, Israelites who were the Jews. Who were calling themselves Jews, but they were going off. You see, these Sadducees, these Pharisees. You know, the Gentiles were the ones who were going with the heathen. Our people were already going to a uh, Roman, or you know, at this time it was Greek. You know, we, you know, we were following whatever the Greek customs were. You know, in Rome, you know, we were following all the Roman customs. Now, American customs is what the Israelites are following you're Gentiles right now you're a Gentile if you haven't been taught this truth and you haven't received this truth you see you're a stranger man a foreigner and it says first be spoken to you because it was necessary why to raise up the tribe of Judah first let's get that real quick let me see if it's Well, I'll read this one, Acts 3 and uh, 26. Unto you first, Yahweh, having raised up his son, Yahweh Shai, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. All right, which were the, 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 Jew, the Jews, who was the tribe of Judah. All right, it's necessary the tribe of Judah be raised up first. Verse Acts 28, 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of Yahweh is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Alright, so just going in, it, there the Gentiles were those Israelite strangers, you know, who were coming out of that wickedness, you know, that, that and a lot of them were born into it, you know, like, like right now here in America, we're born into this wicked society. 
Father. That's why we, our people are Gentiles until they acknowledge Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and acknowledge this truth. Then you're not a Gentile. Then you're not a stranger no more. You know Yahweh Shai, man. You know Yahweh, you know. Um, but the one I wanted to get though is. Uh, Zechariah. See, because Paul and Barnabas, they knew that it was necessary to, to raise the tents of Judah first. You know, which were the Jews. Let's, let's get that real quick. Oh, shit. Zechariah. Let's see. I forgot what, what number it was. So lucky. Let's find it. Zechariah 12 and 7. Oh, I was one, one verse off. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Zechariah 12 and 7. Yahweh Bashim Yahashai also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. All right, so that would have been the Jews. And that's why I said it was necessary was spoken to you first. Meaning, the uh, you know the the uh, apostles were like, hey, we got we got to raise the tents of Judah first. But then you know we had a lot of arrogance in the, in, the, in those Jews that were in, in Greece. You know, they took it on. They were they they were had their half foot halfway in the truth and halfway in the world. You know, of you know, the Greek customs. So therefore, you know they. They rejected it. Which was, those were two thirds also, you see? Rejecting it. That's why they reject it today, man. We go back to Acts 13 and 47. For so hath Yahweh commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldst be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. All right, and, and our, so we're literally the light to the Gentiles. We'll go out there and teach. It's a dark ass world. Everyone's walking in slumber and darkness, right? So now you have a little hope, you know, it's like a little a light on a hill, man. You know, the, the, the men of the Lord out there teaching. You can't hide a light on the hill. You can't hide the men of the Lord on the street corners in concourse, all right? Let's get that real quick. Proverbs 1 and 21. We're out there ready to ready to uh, teach the Gentiles, man. Well, you, you, so you, right now you're calling them blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, but those are the Gentiles of Israel. And they need to be brought into remembrance of who they, who they are and know that, you know, they're, they're the greatest people on the planet Earth. Proverbs 1 and 21. This is talking about, well, let's read it. Verse 20, Proverbs 1 and 20. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. Alright, so she's in the streets. What's the wisdom? It's the it's the men teaching the scriptures to the Gentiles. We're crying without uttering our voice in the streets. Verse 21. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? See, that's the attitude of the Gentile, man. 
you hate knowledge. You know, not all Gentiles, I should say the two-thirds. That's the attitude of the two-thirds. Some of the Gentiles are going to listen to this truth and it's going to it's going to resonate in their spirit. It's going to move them. You know, but right now it says, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? I mean, how long are you going to be deceived, man? You're, you're like, it's simple to deceive a two-third, right? But the elect cannot be deceived, man. But, you know, going back to the top of here, the chief place of concourse, let's look that word up, concourse. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a public place, you know? Let's see. Concourse, a large open area inside or in front of a public building as in an airport or train station. Verse, or not verse two, definition to a crowd or assembly of people. So this is what the men of the Lord are doing, teaching in the streets in the chief place at Concourse, you know? And it's an assembly of people around us I and mean, we're out there teaching. You can't just go to the, you know, the wilderness where there's nobody out there. You're supposed to, you know, show your people transgressions. If there's no people out there, then you're, you're really not, you're not doing that with the chief place of concourse. Although the main edification is, is reserved for the, uh, the, the men watching the videos, you know, the elect, the hopeful elect. That's, that's who the main... The main purpose we're out there to seal the elect but in the meanwhile we gotta you know we have to uh, judge and condemn and bless the nation of Israel who, who is uh, passers-by you know Ver Proverbs 1 and 21 she crieth in the chief place of concourse this is talking about wisdom in the streets right we're in the middle of a public assembly there's nothing but people we're in front of a building we're in front of one of their uh, government building as a matter of fact you know doing camp so that's what we're doing out there man let's get back to Acts 13 that was the base of this lesson that's, where I, that's kind of where I've precepted off of so we'll go to Acts 13 and 48 and when the Gentiles heard this they were glad and glorified the word of Yahweh and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. See? So if you were ordained, meaning ordained is is has it has the, an element of you know selected before. Let's re look up that word ordained real quick. Cause the Christian church tells you anybody can be can you know receive this. Ordained definition. Let's just get this. Verse two. We'll, we'll, we'll read uh, definition two. Well, oh, we'll read. We'll read definition one. Make someone a priest or minister confer holy orders on. Second definition. So you you know you've been ordained to be a prophet, right? Jeremiah one and five. Um, definition two. Order or decree officially. To so order or decree something officially, right? So we've been ordained by who? By Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And ordaining has to deal with becoming a priest or a minister. So I just got to get that verse since we went in on that word. Jeremiah. Where are we at? Let's see. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. All right. So we'll go back to Acts 13, 48. And that's what, that's what it is, man. We've been ordained before we did anything. Before, before we, we were out of the womb, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai owns our soul. He owns our spirit. So he knew us before we were babies. You know, he knew, the, he knew our spirit. So, verse 13, 48, Acts. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of Yahweh, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. So, if you're not ordained, if you're not a chosen priest, if you're not a chosen elect, one-third, someone who's going to listen to the priests or the prophets, 
then it doesn't matter, man. You're not going to have the eternal life, you know? Unless Yahweh Bashem Yahushai ordained you to eternal life. See? And you're not going to receive this truth, so you won't get eternal life. But the ones, the one third who are able to receive this truth, they are going to inherit the kingdom, man. And have salvation be taken up in those uh, uh, so called UFOs. Are the chariots of Israel, right? Verse 49. And the word of Yahweh was published throughout all the region. So that means they were documenting it. The Bible was being was they were writing down the Bible, man. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. A modern day uh, situation like this would be if T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar, who those guys are from the tribe of Judah, or, or even uh, Bishop Nathaniel, those, all three of those men are under a 501c3 gag order. You can't teach. You have limitations on when you can, what you can teach when you, uh, when you get the uh, 501c3, you see? So, you know, if they came up against the men of the Lord, that, that would be the same example like these Jews being stirred up. Why would they be stirred up? Because the men of the Lord, are, they actually hold the truth. Unlike these fake-ass Judite Christian pastors, or these uh, even these fake-ass Israelite Judite pastors, like Bishop Nathaniel and all the other camps that are going off, you know? So let's read 51. It says, But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Iconium, which is another city. But that's what you're commanded to do, man. Shake the dust off. If the people can't get it, they don't receive it, Don't you, we're not going to lose sleep, man. We're going to move on. You know, we know that the, the prophecy is... Two-thirds of our people won't understand this and none of the heathen, all right? So the majority of the people are not going to understand it. The majority of the people are going to remain in darkness and be destroyed, all right? The slain of the, of the Lord shall be many. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 66 and 16, For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh Shem Yahshai plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai shall be many. All right, all of you people that don't listen to the truth, you know we're not gonna lose sleep over you not listening. We don't, we don't give a fuck if you understand what we're saying. We don't give a fuck if you stay in in, 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 in cahoots with your uh, fake ass Jesus Christ. You know, we don't care if you don't want to leave the Catholic Church. We don't give a fuck, man. We got the truth. We're telling you the truth according to knowledge. And so we don't care, man. You you either get it or you don't get it. But we're just going to sh uh, shake the dust off our feet. Just like Yahweh Bashim Yahashai commanded us to do. He didn't say, oh, go keep going back and pushing it on them even if they don't receive it. Hey, he didn't say, you know, just, just uh, be relentless in teaching the two-thirds. No, man, he said... Shake the dust off and move the fuck on, all right? Like like the elders always say, hey, if a nigga can't get it, we're moving the fuck on. See? That's what it is, man. Why? Shake the dust off. Get out of that city. Get out of that town. They don't receive it? Fuck them, you know? Let's, let's get Matthew uh, 10 and 14. That's why a Christian will pray for the wicked, man. We won't pray for the wicked. We're going to shit. You don't believe us? Fuck, man. You're cursed. As far as this truth is concerned, Matthew 10 and 14. And whosoever, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. See? So kick up, kicking up dust. Remember Tupac, he said that we're just kicking up dust. That's what it is, man. Kick, we're going to be kicking up dust, man. Shaking the dust off. If you don't receive this, we're 
guess what? I'm gonna be kicking up dust right out your door, right out your city. See? Oh, uh, let's see here. Acts. Go back to Acts. I still have one more verse, I believe. I'll read that one one more time. It says, but the but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Iconium. See? And you know what? Let's get another precept real quick. Acts 18 and 6. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. See? So your blood's on your own head. Once we teach you this truth and you reject it, your blood is on your own head. We're washing our hands clean. And we're going to shake the dust off, kicking up dust, you know? That's what we're going to be doing, kicking up dust, man. Every time you don't receive this truth, well, guess what? We're going to be kicking up dust, man. Shaking the dust off our feet. Um, go back to Acts. 13 and verse 52 after this is right after they shook the dust off kicked up dust it says Acts 13 51 but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium so when you're kicking up dust against people, that's what you're doing. It's, you're kicking up dust against them, not for them. Oh, they don't want to believe the truth, man, man. You know, whatever. Verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. See? So we're not going to be sad because you can't get it. No, the Holy Spirit's going to be dwelling in, in us, man. We're going to be filled with joy. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Just because you don't like, get it doesn't... <laughs> that's a prime example, man. The disciples, they weren't all depressed. And they weren't all sad because the two-thirds couldn't get it. Because the Jews couldn't get it, you know? Those fake Jews at the time. Which, which they, they, were the, they were the real Jews. They were the so-called uh, black tribe of Judah. So-called black men. But they were, they were still offended in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They didn't... They didn't they didn't, uh, they, you know, they were like your modern-day Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes, and Bishop Nathaniel from the IUIC, you see? Um, let me get one more precept, just speaking on the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 12. It says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So just because they don't receive the truth, be glad, man. Be glad whether when you get a, when you get one lost sheep and, and you get into, you know you find that one lost sheep and you rejoice. The balance is still rejoice even when the people reject it, man. We're just gonna be kicking up dust, man. And he, whether it's at your house or in your city. The men of the Lord are going to be kicking up dust, all right? So, but with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiam for pushing this truth with sincerity, all right? Shalom to the elect.